From an array of top secret, highly secure locations across South Texas, this is the post All-Star pre-second half edition of the Spurs Insider Podcast. I am Mike Finger, joined by Express News beat writers Jeff McDonald and Tom Orsborne and sports editor Nick Talbot. Um, I will start with Mr. Orsborne first. He has returned for the second time, I believe. I have not confirmed this information. This is unverified. But I believe he's back in South Texas at his secure location from a second trip to Cleveland, Ohio in the past month. Is that is that correct, Tom? That is correct. And I believe it was, let's see, New Orleans, Chicago, in between. Okay. And Mr. Did- Mr. Mr. McDonald was in Atlanta. Can you confirm uh, the the Drew Carey theory that Cleveland rocks? You know, I'm out of the norm in this, but I've always been a fan of Cleveland. (laughs) Um, Those Rust Belt cities uh, have changed a lot over the years. I, my first assignment in Cleveland, I think was in 1989 with the Oilers. And um, I've seen those cities, Pittsburgh, uh, Cincinnati and Cleveland change over the years, and uh, I, they've changed for the better. Of those three, I would say that Cleveland lags behind Pittsburgh, and that, but it's still I, I like it. I like the food there. Um, I like it's a good loss. Uh, so I'm not going to bash Cleveland. Wow, we would we would not ask you to bash. Well, why would anyone bash Cleveland? Um, why would anyone bash Cleveland? Well, a lot of cities, the cold, the midges. The Kid Rock fans, yeah. like those are three reasons I'm, I could I could I could. Name. I mean, there, which which city's lake has not been on fire at some point? Right. Cities who have not had a lake on fire cast the first stones. Um, That's right. No, no yeah. Cleveland, you can find right. what you you can find something to do just about anywhere, right, Tom? There, there's a restaurant there I just love. It's called Johnny's. It's uh-huh. an Italian restaurant not too far from the Renaissance Hotel. Just. Uh-huh. Un- Unbelievably good food. It's a piano bar. Uh, they've always had the same piano player, uh, to my knowledge. Their last his name well. Sam. I don't know. No, no, no. It's not the Blanca, but but anyway, it's a, it's a charming place. Food is great, and these cities that aren't you know you're not your LA's. Uh, you know, your Toronto's, but these cities that are, you know, have a, you know, they try really hard, the Cleveland's, the Charlotte's, yeah. and those are some of your best all-star games. And the hospitality in Cleveland was, was outstanding. Uh, you know, uh, being a sports writer, of course, we like the hospitality suites and this one was hands down the best of the all-star games I've been to. Not to belabor the point, but my favorite part about Cleveland is you can get off the airplane you can get on a train. You can take the train to your hotel. Mm-hmm. You can walk from the hotel to the uh, arena and back and never going outside without going that's, back. That's the best part about Cleveland. It's yeah. true. It can be done. It's, good. it's, it's a great setup. Um, also, anyway, the, the fact, we've done, the we, fact we've done 10 though, minutes on Cleveland. What else do we want to talk about? Well, I was going to mention the, the, the sometimes you're next to Kid Rock fans on that train. But I guess we didn't need to go there. Uh, that was that was quite memorable at some point. Um, while we're looking, I said we'd look back and we'd look forward, Tom. Since you were in Cleveland, in the in the uh, mecca, the tourist mecca of Cleveland, that's just welcoming, uh, a great personality. Might not be a ten as a looker, but a, a but a but a great personality, trying hard, uh, uh, wanting to make you happy. Uh, what, what was it like for uh, uh, other representatives from the city of San Antonio who were up in uh, Cleveland with you, Tom? For DeJounte Murray, he, he had a I mean, he was they always have a great time. Well, I can't always say that. And I, I don't know what kind of time Kawhi Leonard had in Toronto uh, <laughs> that you just couldn't gauge that. But, you know, LaMarcus always enjoyed his trips. But DeJounte kid you know the proverbial kid in the candy store i mean he loved it um he was great at the media sessions uh, media session very vulnerable very open um yeah he just had the time of his life with his his little girl riley with him 
And then in the game, he fit in so well. I mean, I was thinking back, um, you know, I don't, I don't recall how Larry Keenan and Gervin did back in the day, but of your current Spur All-Stars, he's the best fit for a game like this, especially in this, you know, modern era, for lack of a better word, the three-point, you know, attacking the rim era. Uh, he's just, he fits in so well. I mean, he was, uh, yeah, it's just, it was just a great fit for it. And, uh, and you saw Big Dave and uh, virtual Timmy D waving left and right at who we aren't quite sure. Uh, but uh, the, the, the Spurs were well re- represented in the, uh, in the 75 for 75, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, George, George Gervin, Kawhi Leonard, uh, you know, one season, small stints, uh, Dominique Wilkins, Moses Malone. But, you know, the main guys, yeah, they were well represented. And, uh, and Manu, of course, uh, took a step closer to the Hall of Fame. Uh, that was kind of a disappointing event in the Hall, uh, the Hall of Fame finalist announcements that I've been to. Usually there's a lot of Hall of Famers there. And uh, Jerry Colangelo is always on hand. It's always kind of fun to talk to him. Um, you know, this year all they had was Isaiah Thomas. And it, there just wasn't much excitement around it. Nothing against Manu. I know Spurs fans will say, yeah, it was meant that way. They're, they're sliding him and so forth and so on. But it just uh, just didn't have that sizzle that past announcements had. Of course, uh, the last one I went to with um, Duncan and Kobe and Garnett, of course, that was at a whole other level. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's that's well done. The well, uh, that's a good All Star Game review. What do you think about Dejounte's chances of uh, doing it again sometime? Good, good. I mean, if you take him at his word, you know the guy is driven. I mean, we can you can say that's lip service and whatever, but he is. He really is driven. He's he wants. Uh, you know, this did whet his appetite for more. He wants to be on the big stage. I mean, he wants. He likes this atmosphere the attention you know being with his peers you know he's he's going to be back I think and uh, just on his merits this season you know he was worthy of it he had to go in as a replacement but uh, injury replacement but um, yeah I think he's going to be back I'm, I'm going to do something that's out of character for me and sort of be a black cloud that rains all over everything and that all that you said is true and he definitely deserves it and he's definitely going to improve I guess the way I would phrase it is if he was going to make it, this is the year to do it because you think of all the guys that were just usually be just shoe in all stars, Paul George, Anthony Davis, Clay Thompson, Damian Lillard. Like you assume some of those guys are going to be healthy enough next year that are going to take some of the spots and it's just going to be harder to get in. I guess the argument could be that every year there's a crop of guys that are hurt and, and aren't eligible and that's just the way it works out. And so maybe it'll work out for DeJounte again, but I did kind of think going into that final stretch run of, is he going to be on? Is he going to not be on that man? If he didn't make it this year, it's going to be awfully tough to make it in, in the next couple of years to come. So it was, it was good that he got on there. And like you said, he did deserve it. He did show up well. He did, he did fit in. He, he looked like an all-star. So, um, you know, I think the, the, uh, the fair way to, to kind of tread the middle ground here is this, like, He's going to have a long career, and there, I, I would say it's safe to say that he's going to make another All Star team uh, at some point because, okay. I mean, he's capable of that. I, I do think that there, he's in a different class still, and I'm not taking a shot at him. I'm not looking to be the dark cloud guy, but you look at like John ja Morant is one of those. He's in that class. Yeah, he's like uh, every like year till he retires. John ja Morant basically. is going yeah. to make it every year f- for the next ten years. Like yeah. that guy's just going to be in it forever he, he, you just check him off the list at uh, whenever you're filling out your ballot John Morant's going to be on it like a Luka Doncic that type of player he's just going to be on it unless he's hurt or something terrible happens DeJounte is going to be one of those guys kind of in that next level that he's going to be considered every year for a long time I think if he continues on this path but I don't think he's one of those where you just write him in for the next 10 years like you do with some of these other guys Maybe he's the annual replacement guy because they know <laughs> something. They know if we get him, he's going to show up. 
He's going to look yeah. well. He's going to make. He's going to make for good ratings, maybe, or contribute to good ratings. It, but it, it was fun watching that from from afar and on social media, and just seeing how much fun Dejounte had. That was really kind of nice to yeah. see. Uh, and I know a lot of people associated with the Spurs were very happy for him to go for ex- precisely that reason. Um, you know, not to take anything away from the previous, been there, done that all stars like Lamarcus and Kawhi and even Tim, but you know, it got to be old hat for those guys after a while. Um, almost an obligation that they had to fulfill. Whereas with DeJounte, it was something he really, really, really wanted to do and wanted to go soak up the whole atmosphere and be a part of it. And I think just seeing someone enthusiastic about being there was was kind of yeah. fun for a lot of people. Another cool thing about this specific All-Star game for DeJounte is um, the 75-year thing coincided with it. Like, that's not – this was a different All-Star experience than some years in that all those guys were there and you really got to be around that. We saw, you know, shout out to our friend with the Spurs, Taylor Hare, who – Anytime you see a uh, a video on the Spurs social feed or whatever that uh, that's that's him shooting it and he's up there chronicling you know uh, Dejounte right. in, introducing uh, his daughter to David Robinson and Dejounte walking past all these greats you know backstage uh, in the tunnel as as all these guys in the Blazers the seventy five year guys are going by like for him a guy who watches as much basketball as Dejounte does and he always reminds us he watches a lot of basketball. <laughs> to be around all those all-time greats, I think was pretty, pretty neat for him. Yeah, no, he, he enjoyed it. He was thrilled to meet Kevin Garnett. That's his guy. And uh, yeah, it was just, it was a great time for him. And uh, seeing him with Riley after the, uh, after the game's neat too. Uh, uh, yeah. So he just, he just had the time of it. Hey, if he's a replacement guy uh, a few more times, he'll take it. That's so. I bet so. So what team does he come back to after, after being around greats and, and just this out of body experience that he had in, in, the, in this huge, huge event. Now he comes back and uh, is ready to play the wizards in Washington on Friday. Friday. Uh, in a, in a, in a battle of uh, teams that aren't really uh, well, I mean, I guess both are in the play and mix, but it's, 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 it's not the, uh, spectacle of the NBA. Let's put it that way. The Spurs return to action in the second half of the season at Washington. Uh, Jeff McDonald will be there to soak it all in in person. What are you expecting on the latter half of this rodeo road trip? I mean, you know, they were playing pretty well going into the break after the after the trade deadline. Um, those those three or four games are playing really well. So it'll be interesting to see if they can pick up where they left off there. Um, you know, some interesting things kind of going into the break. You saw Devin Vassell as your new starting shooting guard and how that's working out, which has been pretty good so far in a, in a pretty tiny sample size. And you're seeing more Josh Primo minutes, which have been uneven, but they're kind of minutes he needs to play. Um, you know, we'll be watching to see if DeJounte keeps putting up the triple doubles and putting that bad, uh, that record even further out of reach, you know, we'll be watching are the Spurs going to, you know, the, the kind of tug of war between um, where are they going to land in the play in race versus where they're going to land in the lottery odds. Um, we can watch Toronto, see if they make the playoffs, because if they do, the Spurs get that draft pick. So there's a lot to watch in the final 23 games, even if the Spurs aren't going to be playing for a title. That's that sounds like riveting stuff. You didn't even mention the the, the huge record that I love to talk about. That's, that's yeah, that's I left that up. off because I, I just we didn't have time for you to just uh, go on a screed right now. <laughs> Greg Popovich, but yeah, Pop Pop is going to get that stupid record. Yeah. Like three, yes. three wins out of twenty three, I think he can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably by yeah. March twelfth or at the, at the latest, you would think. But at, at this point, so if you're Want to see that and think of, think it's a better record than uh, Finger thinks it's it's a good time to go out there and watch the Spurs for you know if you want to see Pop. I have a feeling that if he does, that if Greg Popovich does uh, become the all time leader in regular season wins, which he already leads in total wins, um, I bet that'd be something that the readers of the Express News would want to commemorate some kind of special. Uh, uh, coverage of that. And I, and I bet 
that if readers go to expressnews.com or pick up hard copies of the Dead Tree edition of Express News, they whenever Greg Popovich breaks this this record that has me just in a constant state of just bated breath, um, that you're going to get all the Greg Popovich coverage uh, to memorialize this, 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 this huge event that you could ever hope to, 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 to consume in the, at the express news. In addition to all your great coverage of, of, uh, the world of South Texas and, and, and news and entertainment and, and, and what have you. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I just, I just have a feeling that it's going to be well covered. I have a feeling that's going to be correct. I think we're, all, I think you're right that we're, you know, there'll definitely be a, uh, nice little section after that happens. We've uh, okay. we've covered we've covered this ground before, but do you want to explain again to the uh, listeners who are not viewers uh, the the source of your disdain for this record that everyone else seems to be, um, you know, making it making a big to do about? It's kind of a bit. I'll admit that up front. And I realize, like, whenever I I bring this up, uh, the the devil's advocate crowd will always say well aren't all records like this wouldn't didn't uh when barry bonds broke hank aaron's record like wasn't that just about regular season home runs yes that's true but to me uh, like the the whole point of being a coach in the nba is to is to win things and there's no better uh kind of measure of winning than 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 winning total games, winning playoff games. And if you're talking about the best, the winningest coach of all time um, and to, to throw out the games that actually matter the most, it just seems kind of absurd to me. And it's been, two, I believe it's been more than two years since Greg Popovich became the winningest coach in terms of total victories, regular season and postseason victories. And like, that was a huge accomplishment. Like, like you win the games to get into the playoffs and with, you win more games and like like the home run thing isn't necessarily tied to winning in that way so i i I just to me to make a bigger deal about regular season wins than total wins just seems back backward bass backwards um but it's fine And, and and it's such a huge like i i don't have the numbers in front of me but if you threw in like the extra babe ruth Hank Aaron, Barry Bonds, home runs. I don't think it'd be two years difference. It might be, but I doubt it, sir. Um, so like to, to, to have this big of a gap between Greg Popovich passing Don Nelson and Lenny Wilkins a couple of years ago to doing it two years later to, to include all these games on, on frankly mediocre Spurs teams. It just seems kind of odd, but that's the record that people care about i suppose so that's the one we will celebrate and memorialize so there you go lebron james set their all-time scoring record if you count playoff games i don't know how you feel about that he did that what a week ago two weeks ago a little bit of time so he passed kareem abdul jabbar so he's the all-time leading scorer if you count playoffs i think the caveat that some people will say is that you know there's a lot more playoffs now than there used to be so you know even if you're you know 20 years ago they still have when did they expand to 16 i don't even know been like that all my but, life i think so no 16 has been uh, for a long time um yeah. i don't know i don't know yeah like, i like don't like know the, the exact year like, so like greg popovich and don nelson's uh playoff formats were pretty similar for most yeah. there might like the, the first round used to be five games instead of seven but anyway um i'm, I'm just yeah, saying I'm, if, I'm, pop, if pop never wins another game and finishes two behind don nelson uh, in the regular season list, I still say Don Nelson would trade careers with him in a heartbeat. Exactly. Exactly. And that's kind of my point. But it's not worth it. This, this has become a bit. Um, it's not worth debating. I'm not trying to turn this into a debate or whatever, but you asked me to explain it for the umpteenth time. So there I did it. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is a podcast. We're not here to debate stuff. That's true. Is there anything you do want to debate about the about anything debate i don't know is there that you feel that the the listeners should should hear about should that they need to know about tom you one thing i didn't mention about the uh your all-star experiences uh, was lonnie rotwalker there for some reason lonnie showed up to support his uh his friend Dejounte murray which was really cool uh 
uh, DeJounte was touched by that show of support. Um, I didn't get to see Lonnie. Uh, they're at Rocket Mortgage Field House Arena Center, whatever you want to call it. But, um, it's not the queue anymore. Yeah, the house that Dan yeah. Gilbert built. Yeah. But that that was a neat gesture. I mean, really, really neat. It meant a lot to Dejounte. I mean, it really did. And uh, that was that was a neat, neat moment. Neat, neat sidebar. The reason I brought that up is because that's not a that's not a name that uh, that Jeff mentioned uh, when he gave his all encompassing well, uh, yeah. overview of what to look for in the second half of the season. Yeah. And it's something that we talked going. about and with something we've talked about in the preseason. And I'm just wondering, what do you think this might be unfair uh, to single one person out like this, but what the hell, what, what is the state of Lonnie Walker and his future with this franchise at the midway point of this season, which is going to be, I think we all predicted was a pivotal season for Lonnie Walker in his future because he does not have a, contract beyond this season where where are we in that saga jeff mcdonald it's funny you should mention this because this is part of what i'm uh, will appear into uh, in the what day is today tuesday in the wednesday edition of the express news is, is partially what i'm writing is is are we looking at the uh the last days of lonnie walker in a spurs uniform i don't know that i can answer that question but it's partially because he's just so wildly inconsistent. And that's been um, pretty, pretty well chronicled throughout his career. Like he'll go, you just take February, for example, first four games of February, he totals 20 points in four games, includes a scoreless outing in Chicago. And then you take the last three games that he appeared in February, and he totals like 55 points and, and he's, <laughs> he's, he's pivotal and then and then winning two of those three games. And you just can't figure if you would pick one way or another, like which Lonnie Walker is he, the Spurs decision making this summer would be easy. But because yeah. but just when you decide, ah, they could probably just let him walk, he'll come up with these these couple of games that make you think, well, you know, if they could get him back at a price, maybe they should. And um, so I don't I don't know. Uh, he's he's averaging exactly the same amount of points he averaged last year, eleven point two which is a career high, but his shooting numbers are just have, have kind of, he's not, he's not as efficient. I'll put it that way. So I don't know what, what, they, what, I don't know that we have any answers right now, but he also looks like a guy I'm trying to think how I want to phrase this. If someone, if someone gave him a, a contract that you couldn't match, I don't think that you feel terrible about it. I think that's fair. I think that the Spurs have a history of, um, letting other teams make those offers. And uh, even with guys who they've kind of brought along and felt great, about, I think of Jonathan Simmons in that way. I mean, they took Jonathan Simmons where J Jonathan Simmons had to pay. He had to pay for a, for a G league tryout with the, I think then Austin Toros and he becomes a, like an integral part of their rotation and they let him go when somebody paid more than they were willing to pay. And that's fine. But a couple of things I do want to say about Lonnie without, um, without making any coming to any conclusions. Cause I don't have a conclusion. First of all, I think it'd be kind of sad if you left because for like from a selfish reason that he's just one of the great young guys to talk to <laughs> in the NBA, like just a really fun interview, um, thoughtful, that type of stuff from the Spurs fans perspective. Like it is so rare um, to see a, a kid like him come in and embrace the city. Like, he has done like, I can't think of any, and, and not that their recent draft picks or recent signees haven't embraced San Antonio, but Lonnie's just so enthusiastic about wanting to be a San Antonian. <laughs> he wants to embrace everything about this city that not a lot of, uh, not a lot of people around the NBA would embrace that way. I mean, this is the era of the NBA where everybody wants to go to LA or New York or San Francisco or whatever. So I think that would be kind of sad if that guy doesn't stick around. Um, now, the, the other thing I wanted to mention is just kind of the cold, hard numbers involved. And I think what it's going to come down to, if, if Lonnie continues at his current uh, pace, which is what Jeff just said, where he's inconsistent, there's three games where he doesn't look like he's going to come back, and then three games where he's 
kind of the centerpiece to the whole team. If that continues the rest of the season where they could go either way, then I think there's a number of, of factors that are going to come into play. First of all is, is the, 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 the question of whether some other team just offers a bunch of money that the Spurs don't want to match, then they probably don't do that. But the other thing is how the Spurs cap looks. Um, there's all kinds of flexibility they have right now in terms of how much money they could have available. They could have 15 million if they bring everybody back. If they clear the decks, they could have over 30. And I think um, Lonnie's one of those guys where if he hasn't made a case either way and the Spurs have an opportunity to spend a whole bunch of money on some big name free agent or some sign and trade person, then Lonnie could become kind of a casualty there where, okay, you, you clear his salary off the books. If there's, if there's some big name to replace him with, if there's not a big name to replace him with, then I think you, and nobody, if there's not a big name to replace him with and nobody blows him away with some huge offer, then I think there's a decent chance he could be back. That's a fair assessment. I mean, I think it's fair to say they haven't like quote unquote given up on Lonnie Walker or have right. decided we don't need this guy anymore, but it's kind of what you say. There's a lot of factors involved, a lot of things to weigh, and it's all on a sliding scale. Yeah. So, again, that's something I, I think the Spurs would love it if over the next, well, how many weeks do we have left? Six, seven um, in its regular season. If he gives them lots of reasons to want to keep him around, they would love that. Um, and I think a lot of people would love that. Um, but that, that's, that figures to be one of the bigger um, questions of the off season um, in terms mm-hmm. of guys who are coming back. Now, I think before we go, I want to go ask everybody to reflect a little bit. Um, and this might be a tough question um, because there's so much to choose from. Uh, what was everybody's favorite moment from the Goran Dragic, Grad Dragic era with the San Antonio Spurs? Which one? There were two, two eras. Well, exactly. Yes, either one. Uh, well, I will tell you my favorite. I mean, this is kind of inside baseball, but I will tell you my favorite. My favorite era, a uh, part of that era, is with the, on his draft day, whenever that was wow. in two thousand and eight, where uh, that was when we were writing on a newspaper deadline. So like that kind of came like right at the end of the second round. So for the, uh, for, the for the for the listeners, explain to them what the uh, what a newspaper was. It's like the the printed out blog. Okay. Go ahead. They, they delivered your news. But anyway, like there was a deadline and it happened to be right at the end of the second round. The Spurs usually draft in late. That's when they took this Goran Dragic fella. I had written all mm-hmm. about the first round pick that year, which I think that was the George Hill draft. If I'm not mistaken. And that was the story. But they had just taken this guy, Goran Dragic. So threw him in there. Spurs took Goran Dragic in the second round. And then was after that was filed and printed like like 15 minutes later where somebody comes in and says, no, we actually traded that guy for Malik Hairston. Uh-huh. And so somewhere out there, there are newspapers that have the Spurs, you know, are going to like draft Goran Dragic as an actual player. And so that was my favorite part. There's some inaccurate information. And he, he lasted this year slightly longer. His slightly second longer. Stint with, the, yes. stint with the Spurs. And where did he, he, that, am I correct that he is now a member every of the other, Brooklyn Every Nets? other former Spurs, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the Brooklyn Nets. That's right. That should be fun. Well, before uh, we go, we can also talk about another another guy that got traded, Drew Eubanks. He's landed back home. home to Oregon. Good for him. Oregon. Good yes. for him. I'm happy he landed. He landed there. It's only a ten day contract for now, but I'm happy he, he 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 got to go home and you know still pick up an NBA paycheck. Yes. That's good news. And, is that all your? Is that all you have to offer there, Tom? Is yes. And, and, and yes, yes, and things are working out well for Derek White in Boston. Yes, uh, sir. Yes, that yes, is correct. <laughs> they seem to love. They seem to love Thaddeus Young up in Toronto. Like the Spurs yeah. are making everybody happy. You are correct, and, sir. And Thad Young, being the consummate pro, tweeted out video of him working out during the All Star break while everyone else was uh, taking it easy. The consummate pro is working. So I mean, if there's uh, just, one thing to say about that young is that he's a pro. Exactly. And uh, uh, I think that's a that's a good way to uh, that's a good way to end this. I think everybody can take uh, as we've done so many times this year, take a page out of Thad Young's book. Always be a pro. Take a take a, a page from Drew Eubanks' book. 
Don't let rejection get you down. Go home if you need to. Take a page from Goran Dragic's book. And, uh, <laughs> you know, if you're going to be in a place for only a couple of minutes, a decade apart, just be make sure it's memorable and be thankful for that. And in the meantime, uh, take care of each other and keep it real. We'll see you.